everyone, I'm Ash and we're on That Film Theory, which can mean only one thing, and it's that I have a film theory for you. Now today, there is loads of discourse that we're going to be looking at around the spiritual ideology of Harold Ramis's Groundhog Day. What was that? Groundhog Day. What was that? Groundhog Day. It's a really bad joke, but there we go. Groundhog Day. Feel like you've been here before yet? Woo. As with anything so wrapped up in morality, pseudo-Christian values and reincarnation, it's become somewhat of a touchstone for religious theorising. And Bill Murray's character Phil Connors does actually say he's a god at one point, so... Now there's been considerable talk around the idea that Phil is actually dead and has perished in a snowstorm that's perpetually surrounding Punks of Tawny whilst he's stuck in his time loop. That's why he can't kill himself and why he's stuck living the same day over and over and over and over again because he is actually stuck in purgatory. His soul has been identified as someone that's not wholly bad but isn't quite good enough to reach the lofty heights of heaven just yet, so he's got to prove himself in the limbo in between. Either he's already fully dead at this point, or he's dying and reliving the day to try and prove to himself that he can reach the right resolution to move on and get into the pearly gates of heaven. But what if it's all a little bit darker than that? What if the punks of tawny that Phil has constructed in his mind isn't actually purgatory, but the full burn your briskets hell itself? Think about it. When we meet Phil, he is really not a nice person. He's self-centered, he's arrogant, he's manipulative, he's conceited. He's just not very nice. He's not the sort of guy that's going to be making it up to heaven. And even with purgatory, he'd need a serious attitude adjustment to even get to that sort of state. His morality is just that black and white. His true idea of hell would be to have to truly care about other people around him. What worse hell could there be for someone so self-involved than being forced to help an entire town full of people? And worse than that, it's a hell that promises him the ability to help and improve himself without ever letting him realise this moment of epiphany and move on. He can get kids WrestleMania tickets and fix people's backs, but he can't stop an old man from dying, no matter how hard he tries. And on the surface, it might seem like Phil does all these things for self-improvement for the wrong reasons, like to impress Rita and seduce her. Sure, there's probably an element of boredom that drives his actions, like learning how to flick cards into a hat to expert level, but it's her that's his goal until the very end when he has a pure day of selflessness. For most people, that would be his defining arc and the thing that allows him to move on. But there might be something more to it. And to pick that apart, you first have to consider two things. Firstly, what gets Phil trapped there in the first place, and secondly, what specifically gets him freed. It's simple enough to say that he gets trapped there because he's a bad person, but that really doesn't explain the supernatural elements of it all, or why specifically he was chosen, as he's hardly the worst person in the entire world. More likely is the suggestion that he's trapped in Punks of Tawny for something he does whilst he's there, or perhaps someone he interacts with that has that sort of hellish power. According to one theory that's posted on Reddit, he's actually there under control of the devil, and we actually get to meet him earlier on in the film but might not have realised it at the time. You'd be forgiven for missing him too, as he doesn't come with little horns and a forked tail and a big old trident for stabbing people. He's instead a businessman in a business suit with his business suitcase trying to sell life insurance. That's right, Groundhog Day's devil is in fact Ned Ryerson also known as Needle Nose Ned. The theory suggests that Phil is trapped in Punks of Tawny because he insults Ned and turns down his offer of a contract for life insurance. Or is that a contract for his soul? It's from the point of their first meeting that everything goes wrong for Phil. Literally, the first step he takes after meeting him is a doozy into an icy puddle and it all goes downhill from there. Curiously, Phil doesn't even recognise him, as if Ned is working under some pretense to try and get close to Phil without him realising. Almost like the devil saw an opportunity to take a soul from someone he knew and who he knew would be in Punks of Tawny at the time and that he could have some fun with. Someone that deserved to be tormented. It's not until Phil finally relents to Ned and signs away his soul that he's allowed to move on. That's the key to the ending and it's not an act of kindness or saving anyone, it is that transaction. Ned was always selling a contract that was for more than life insurance. It was for Phil's soul and it was through bartering with endless torment that he managed to get it. By the end, he's lost sight of who he was and Ned slash the devil is able to absolutely fleece him out of extensive, unnecessary insurance. Is this him selling his soul to the devil for freedom and everything he's ever wanted, which is the usual devil sign-off for these sort of soul trading transactions? After all, he wants to be loved by everyone, he wants to be famous, he never wants to suffer the torment of Punxsutawney again, which he gets by learning to love it, 
and he gets the girl. Doesn't it all sound a little bit too ideal? So maybe the ending doesn't see Phil completely freed after all. Maybe him breaking the loop and moving on is actually his soul departing his body into the hands of the devil, and the ending isn't a happy one, but one profoundly more sad. Just as George Bailey's revelation in It's a Wonderful Life saw him come to embrace all the things that he'd tried to escape from, and that was his own personal hell, Phil has to do the same thing. He learns to love all the things that he hated, and abandons everything that made him famous in the first place. Doesn't that sound a bit like hell, having to change everything that you are to something completely opposite? So that is just our take on Groundhog Day. Let us know if you think that it is super or if it is completely hellish. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notifications bell, and as always, please come back for more. Thanks for watching.